So thank you, Chairman, for the invitation to present at this year's European Bifurcation Club. The title of my presentation is Does Stent Design Influence Clot PCI? Insights from the Celtic Bifurcation Study, for which I was uh, the lead investigator in Bristol, a study led by Simon Walsh and David Foley. This two-year analysis, particularly with regards OCT, has been undertaken by Callum Creaney. These are my disclosures pertinent to this presentation. I think it's important to acknowledge that the OCT data presented relates to a post hoc analysis gathered from a single centre and therefore should only be considered as hypothesis generating. So what was the original study hypothesis? Well, firstly, it was to evaluate the outcome of culotte stenting using contemporary stent devices in the hope that we could demonstrate excellent outcome despite the complexity of a two stent strategy. And secondly, it was com to compare head to head the outcomes achieved with two contemporary stent designs. The Zion Sierra with its uh, three linker uh, technology against the, the Synergy with a two linker technology. The primary outcome of the uh, study was reported in 2018 at EuroPCR and published in Euro Intervention and demonstrated really excellent one year outcomes with a composite of death, myocardial infarction and target vessel revascularization here demonstrated with no difference observed between Synergy and Zions, 8.6% in the Synergy arm against 3.7% in the Zions arm. If we now look at the two-year outcome data, then we see very little in the way of progressive events, just a 1.2% additive event rate in that 12-month period in both arms. Secondary outcome data show in terms of a composite of myocardial infarction, stroke, target vessel failure, stent thrombosis and restenosis of 17.7 against an 18.8% rate in synergy against Zions comparatively with non-inferiority met. And if we look then, you know, myocardial infarction observed in just a small number of patients, predominantly numerically in the synergy arm, but binary stenosis at nine month angiographic follow-up seen numerically more often in the Zions group, but non-significantly uh, so statistically. It's important to reflect that actually the myocardial infarction occurred most often in the periprocedural period, as we see in many of uh, contemporary bifurcation studies. The three non-procedural myocardial infarctions did not result in target vessel revascularization. And in fact, target vessel revascularization was only observed in 5% of the overall study cohort four of which were due to instant restenosis. So if we turn our attention to the nine month OCT analysis, this was undertaken in all of the Belfast cases, 16 Zions and 14 Synergy patients. It's important to understand POT was undertaken in all of the index procedures and only about 25% of cases were actually image guided with intravascular ultrasound at that time. Due to uh, the post hoc analysis uh, of this, it's important to reflect that actually there were some baseline differences in terms of the vessel size. We see slightly smaller proximal main vessel and certainly uh, significantly smaller side branch uh, caliber in the Synergy versus the Zions population uh, randomized in, in Belfast. And we undertook a 0.5 millimeter OCT analysis in these cases that were available. So 17,000 plus Zion struts and 13,000 Synergy struts were analysed uh, at this time and we see really fantastic healing in both uh, stents with numerically more uncovered and malopose struts observed in the Zion uh, platform but really excellent healing in both. If we consider malaposition distance, an average of two, 250 against 170 micron, no difference, and longitudinal extent of malaposition between 0.9 and 1.5 millimeters. In terms of significant malaposition defined as uh, malaposition distance of more than 400 micron or longitudinal extent greater than uh, one millimeter, that was observed in only five cases, uh, the majority of which were actually observed in the proximal main vessel segment. Importantly, this was not observed in any of the cases that had image guidance at index. Now, turning the attention to the area of the, the polygon and the neocarina, there were 13 cases, which makes up almost half of our cases, uh, representing malaposition of stent struts across the daughter vessel. 
and that extended up, up to a millimeter or more into a kind of near carinal space. And it's important to reflect that actually the vast majority of those were on the Zions platform, which may indicate a potential difference between this three-linker and two-linker technology of synergy. Another potential reason for this could be due to the bifurcation angle, but actually when we look at those without malapposition in red against those with malapposition in blue, actually there was no difference between the bifurcation angles in these groups. Uh, roughly around 40 degrees uh, being the, the angle in, in the study's uh, recruits. If we then turn our attention to both stent and lumen areas, here we look at the proximal main vessel in this left panel, we've excluded the polygon, and we look at the distal main vessel in the right panel, then we can see due to the fact that the synergy group had smaller uh, vessel dimensions, that, that we have a smaller stent and luminal area for synergy in red and orange against the Zion stent in blue and lumen in green. But actually the, the area of interest is both in the distal main vessel and in the, in the side branch where we see this slight decrement in both stent and lumen area up against both platforms, most strikingly with synergy, which possibly may reflect uh, you know, an issue around the culotte technique in terms of stent within stent across a side cell and maybe a point of further discussion. So conclusions from the two-year outcome data from Celtic and this small sub-study analysis of the OCT from Belfast show excellent clinical results in non-left main culotte PCI utilising third generation stent device. We see fantastic healing with both devices with low rates of malapposition and uncovered struts. But it is important to reflect that almost half the cases that were followed by OCT showed malapposition at the level of the carina. This may relate to a lack of index imaging, and October uh, may inform us that, that imaging does uh, allow a reduction in this observation. But importantly, we must reflect that in Celtic, there was no signal regarding clinical events. And clearly further studies would be required to understand whether stent design or maybe uh, the stent strategy in this setting culotte impact on outcome. The stent areas at the daughter vessel ostia were reduced with the greatest burden of uh, new intimate observed at this point and I wonder again whether this opens up discussion regarding stent strategy. I look forward to the discussion and thanks for your attention.